Welcome back everyone. Today we will be rooting our Sony Xperia Play smartphones. And if you're not familiar with the Xperia Play, it's a very unique and special smartphone that instead of having a keyboard that slides out, you have a full gamepad. And this one is pretty rare. And if you do have one, congratulations. These are very hard to find out there in the wild. And on eBay, they go for some crazy amount of money. But uh, we will be going through the entire process of rooting our smartphone. And the whole goal is to basically delete a bunch of stuff that we don't need on the smartphone and let it run a lot smoother and just set it up to where we're only going to play games on it. Unfortunately, the Sony Xperia internal storage is 400 megabytes and that's extremely low. We want to relieve some of that stress that a lot of these apps will do to your internal storage. So we're going to get rid of a lot of that stuff. And that's what basically rooting is. Uh, rooting gives you that power and that full control of the system OS and that way you can delete a bunch of apps that came out of the box like AT&T GPS or AT&T contacts list and so on and so forth. So my goal is to show you how to get rid of those apps and also install third party apps and that's another thing that gives us the benefit of rooting our smartphone is to enjoy and download any app that we want. And we will install a PS1 emulator along with a Super Nintendo emulator at the end of this entire process. So you can get started on some awesome emulation. Make sure to subscribe to the channel and hit that notification bell so you don't miss any more Sony Xperia videos coming very soon. Now things to consider when you're going through this process is that there's going to be some disadvantages when rooting your smartphone and some of them will be rooting can go wrong where your phone can get bricked so you run the risk of bricking your phone if you have bad connectivity when you're pushing that root into your phone uh, through the application that we're going to be using or if you're phone completely dies during the process that can happen sometimes and also another disadvantage is that if we're downloading third-party apps some of those apps can be malicious and you know you might give hackers some kind of access to your phone and data and stuff like that that can be stored on your smartphone but we want to be safe you don't want to be adding any type of like personal information like I wouldn't log into your Google account on your Sony Xperia Play. It's just too old. It's outdated. It's not worth it. So my goal is to just basically turn it into a completely new device and just have it strictly for gaming. Two things you will need for this entire process. One is going to be a computer that's running Windows 8 or 10 and you will need a micro USB cable to connect your phone to your PC. Next, we're going to be downloading and installing two different things. The first one is a flash tool program and the second is the flash tool drivers. Now, this is extremely important that you have your PC set up for this kind of stuff because the drivers are unsigned. So they won't install properly unless you disable the driver signature enforcement on your computer or you know you have a program or some type of app that allows you to override that signature enforcement and that way you can install the drivers and also install the program and if you do have a problem with trying to get this stuff set up there will be a guide in the description down below where you can disable uh, the driver signature enforcement it's fairly easy you will have to reboot your uh, computer in order to basically access that part of your PC and once you're done you can just reload your PC and you should be back to normal. After you have your computer all disabled for the driver signature enforcement we're going to download and install the program flash tool version 0.9.24.4 Next, download and install the flash tool drivers.exe. And once you're in the program, what you want to do is select four choices during the installation process. So when you come up to the page that says choose components, we're only going to choose four from the list 
and those four are going to be the flash mode drivers along with the fast boot drivers common drivers moga and zeus board and finally the sony ericsson xperia arc xperia neo xperia play etc once you have those selected press the install to begin the process of installation on your pc on your xperia play we want to enable the usb debugging and go to your settings and under applications through development you want to enable usb debugging next we want to set our phone to the msc mode not mtp mode and this is located under settings through sony ericsson connectivity and usb connection mode once that's all set up you want to connect your phone to your computer and launch the flash tool program if you don't see my r800 just wait for the program to read your phone. It might take a couple of minutes. In Flash Tool, you want to select My R800, go to Root, and Force Zerg Rush. Now, it will give you an option to choose either Super User or Super SU. Choose Super SU. And after you do, your phone will reboot once. And after the reboot, we have to run the Super SU app on our phone. And it will ask us to install the binary via CWM or normal. So we want to select normal. Now that Super SU has been installed, go to your Google search and it's now time to install a file manager. So go to your Google search and you want to search up the Solid Explorer Classic. Scroll down until you find the apkmirror.com website and select that. And we have the Solid Explorer Classic. And we're looking for the download link. So just keep scrolling down until you see all versions. And the version that we want to download is 1.7.3. And by default, my Xperia Play didn't have a file manager, so I had to download this one. If you have another file explorer that works for you, you can go ahead and download that, but we'll continue to download 1.73 here. So just follow. Uh, through the links make sure you download the APK it's 6.53 megabytes it shouldn't take too long once your download has started you want to click on the here button and that will begin the uh, download
Once the download is complete in your notifications, you want to select at download and install. Back on our PC, we want to download the Clockwork mod, and this is a special uh, recovery mode that allows you to back up your entire phone just in case something goes wrong. You can always use that backup to recover your phone's OS, and you should be good as new. So download the CWM Installer 5 app APK. You can copy it wherever you like. I'm just going to throw it here in the root of the phone, and we're good to go. Now that we have the file explorer installed, we can now go ahead and begin the installation of CWM. So find your APK, select it and install. Once the installation process has finished, run the application. And for the first time here, I wasn't able to actually do anything. It just uh, was able to read my phone model. This is an easy fix. All you have to do is just reboot your phone and go back into the application and it should start working. Before we access the recovery menu, I highly suggest you pre-install an SD card. That way you're not taking up your internal storage through the backup process. Once you have your SD card already installed, good to go. Power off your Sony Xperia Play and then power back on. And when you see the Sony Ericsson logo, you want to hit the up volume key. So just keep pressing that key when you see the Sony Ericsson logo and you should access the CWM recovery menu. And once you're in the menu, you have to use the volume keys up and down to select an option. And once you select an option, you want to hit the home button to accept. Scroll down and select the backup and restore and hit the home button. And now we have three different options, backup, restore and advanced restore. Select backup and hit home again. And your phone will begin to backup your entire system onto your SD card. Once the backup is complete, you will have the new message saying backup complete. While you're here, you might as well press both the volume up and down to re-enable your back button. And for some odd reason, when you install this recovery mode for the first time, it disables your back button. So this will re-enable it. I recommend backing up your backup on your PC. That way, if something happens to your SD card, you won't lose all that information. Let's head back on our PC and download two different emulators. The first one is the PS1 emulator called EPSXE. We're going to be downloading the version 2.0.15. Follow the steps to download that. Next, we'll be downloading a plugin for EPSXE. Download the APK, plug in your Sony Xperia Play through the USB connection and copy those two APKs in the root of your USB drive. And finally, we're going to be downloading the Super Nintendo emulator called the SNES 9XEX. Click on the downloads link page there. And we want to select the version that says 9-1.5.5. Or .apk. This one worked out for me. You can try different versions to see if that will work for you, but this is the version that worked out on my device. So just go ahead and download it from Google Drive, download it anyway, and once that's finished, copy that APK over to your USB device. Now it's time for us to copy our games over to our USB drive. And I created two different folders, one called PS1 games and the other SNES ROMs. And I have them on the root of the USB drive on the Xperia Play. And it just makes it a lot easier for me to track down when I'm opening up these emulators and running 
these games so however you want to do it it's just your own preference but this is the way i did it and it just works out for me as far as the ps1 games go i am using isos and they are .pvp files the eboot.pvp and they seem to work but some of these games will not be able to run off the gamepad unfortunately I was playing Croc and that one didn't work so I had to use the on-screen uh, d-pads and whatnot. You will have to go through the PS1 emulator settings to map the buttons because it's just not going to work right away and you will have to go through and just make a little bit of adjustments here and there to make it work properly. Go through your file manager and install all three APKs. I will be talking about this emulator specifically in another video so that way uh, we can just go through the settings together and just basically go through that entire process of setting it up but for the most part it's fairly easy just go into your settings and make sure that the Xperia Play gamepad is activated and that you map all of the buttons according to whatever you have uh, set up or whatever you want to set up to so uh, I just use the basic mapping of like D-pad up, down, left, right, triangle, square, circle, X, start, and select. And there's also the L1 and R2 buttons. To enable the plugin for PSX, go to your preferences. And under video preferences, go to video renderer and choose the OpenGL plugin. The awesome thing about this app is that when you hit the run game, it's going to search your entire SD card and internal memory to find compatible games. And it works flawlessly and it read all three of the games that I copied over and it worked just fine. Pretty simple to use the SNES emulator, just load up the game, select the folder that has your ROMs, select one of your games and you should be up and running. As far as the game controls go, I didn't really have to do anything in settings. All I did was just slide the Xperia Play open and started using the buttons. So that was very simple and easy and there was no need to go into settings and map any buttons. It just started working right away. Last thing I'm going to talk about is deleting all of those useless apps. So hit the jump button in the file manager and under device you want to select your system root and from there we want to go to the folder that says system go to the app folder and here you will find all of those apps that are on the Xperia Play. In order for you to delete an application you have to hold whichever you want to delete and select the delete button. You want to grant access to Super SU to completely delete that application from your phone. Make sure that you don't delete anything important. For example, I want to delete something that says like bootinfo.apk. You just have to be careful, have some common sense, and don't delete anything that looks important. At the bottom, you'll see a number of files along with your storage capacity. So yeah, we are up and running. Once you have your emulators all installed, those APKs installed through the file manager, you can start gaming and playing your favorite retro games on your Xperia Play. How cool is that? Let me know in the comment section if you have any questions whatsoever. I'll try to get back to you as soon as possible. And if you enjoyed this video, please give it a thumbs up. It really helps me out a lot. And if you haven't already subscribed to the channel, please subscribe and hit that notification bell so you don't miss a video in the future. Thank you so much for watching. Take care, guys, and I'll see you on the next one.